Are you looking at picking up a new gaming laptop or gaming desktop, but you're not quite sure which one fits you just right? Well, hopefully this video might answer some questions and do a little bit of a comparison between some fairly similarly specced and relatively similarly priced gaming laptops and desktops. So a quick look at the desktop that I have here. This is the ITX Build Guide PC. I did a full video on building this system, so if you want to know how to do that, then check out the link in the cards up above. But this system is an i5-6600K. It's a very nice gigabytes ITX motherboard which has Wi-Fi and an M.2 slot and actually is pretty comprehensive for an ITX motherboard. Also has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM although that can be upgraded if you like. A 240 gigabyte SSD and I believe a 2 terabyte hard drive although there's been a few changes since I've done the guide. Uh, also a fully uh, a semi-modular but full sized uh, 550 watt power supply, uh, an AIO water cooler, 120 millimeter water cooler, uh, obviously the Coolmaster Elite 110 case. And overall, uh, also a GTX 1060 ITX card as well. So pretty powerful, pretty awesome. Around about the £900, around about $1,000 price range, depending on where and when you're buying stuff. But nonetheless, a pretty awesome spec build. The laptop, on the other hand, is an MSI GS437RE. This is a GTX 1060-based laptop, an i7 or i7 7700HQ. Also has 16 gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 gig SSD, depending on which model you pick. A one terabyte hard drive, a 1080p uh, very nice sort of IPS looking display, obviously a keyboard, battery, trackpad and that sort of stuff, and it's just a generally pretty nice 14 inch travel kind of based gaming laptop. Jumping back to the desktop, the main benefits for this one, at least for this specific chassis and build, is that it's actually pretty compact compared to standard, you know, desktop systems, including stuff like the Killmaster Mod Project, to the other build guides including the i5-7600K and GTX 1070 build guide I did. Uh, this one is also actually pretty quiet. The graphics card and the uh, closed loop water cooler do a really good job of being nice and quiet. And because it's a 6600K on a Z270 uh, or Z170 ITX motherboard, this means that it's actually fully overclockable. So you can actually push this a little bit further than it already is. It's also significantly lower temp. So this one, uh, the CPU, I think sits about 50 to 60 degrees uh, and the GPU sits at about 60 to 70 degrees under full gaming load. So really impressive there. It's also upgradable and, as I'll come on to in a second, also has better performance than laptop despite having the same graphics card and, in theory, a fairly similar CPU. Now, of course, there are some drawbacks with this system. The, the main one being is that this was something that I built myself and if you do want to build it yourself, of course, that is uh, something that you don't have to do with a laptop. This comes pre-packaged and working out of the box, uh, whereas this one you will have to build it yourself or get someone like Overclockers UK to build it for you, although you don't necessarily get the granularity of picking exactly exactly which components you want in the system and therefore maybe a little bit more expensive. You also don't get a monitor, mouse or keyboard with it, which you're going to want to add sort of three or four hundred pounds. You want some fairly nice peripherals and monitor to go with it, which does bring it a lot closer to the price of the laptop than uh, just on its own. So do bear that one in mind. You also don't have windows included in the price. Uh, I didn't include that uh, just during the build guide. So you're looking at an extra, uh, I think it's like 50 to 100 pounds, depending on which uh, version of windows you want to go with. So do bear that one in mind. When it comes to the benefits of the laptop, I think this is fairly obvious. This is is portable. In fact, I actually took this laptop with me to Taipei where I was able to edit uh, both while I was out there and get some of the videos that you'll have seen from Computex up, uh, as well as actually when I went to Austin, I took a very similar version of this laptop uh, out there to Texas uh, and was actually editing on the way home on the plane. So that was really useful for me, of course, having uh, around about a four hour battery life for a sort of general web browsing kind of use is really nice and being able to physically t uh, pick it up and take it somewhere while it still is on and working and that sort of stuff, even if it's just, uh, you know, inside the house to show your family or whatever, or if you, especially if you're a student, it's quite a big one to be able to take this uh, to lectures or whatever, take your notes in it and then come back and have a, a decent machine to play games on as well. Of course, this does also come with a display as well, whereas obviously the, the ITX PC doesn't, and this also has Windows included, and it's just pre-set up. All you have to do is uh, turn it on uh, and plug it in when you get it, and that's about it. So it is uh, certainly a little bit more of an easier experience 
experience for you and a little bit more useful if you are someone who travels a lot. The main drawbacks for the laptop are that it's actually slower. Despite having an i7 versus an i5 CPU in the ITX build PC, uh, this one is obviously a full desktop, full fat CPU, whereas this one is an HQ or a mobile CPU, meaning that it is a decent bit slower even than the i5 counterpart, so do bear that one in mind. It also has a non-overclockable CPU and because of the general just heat issues that Cabby Lake is facing, it's also uh, a little bit hotter as well and of course just because of the sheer size of it, uh, the GPU normally runs uh, I think about 70 odd degrees and the CPU normally runs about 80 odd degrees, so a little bit hotter there. It's also louder as well just again because of the chassis design and the fact that you have that much power in such a, a small space. It's also more expensive depending on what peripherals and monitor you go with for this chassis will obviously depend on uh, how much more expensive either one is but just for the bare systems as you see them on the table uh, this one is uh, five or six hundred pounds uh, I think about six hundred pounds more expensive than the ITX chassis so that does give you a lot of money to spend on peripherals and a monitor uh, over this one for the better performance as well. And another drawback you may see here is the power brick it's external and is actually required if you want to play games at any sort of decent FPS as it requires you to be plugged into the wall to actually get the best performance out of it so do bear that one in mind. Now I've mentioned performance a couple of times here so let's take a look at the performance for both of them and the difference between them. So a quick look at the performance especially the performance differences and we're looking at nearly a 2000 point difference in 3D Mark. That's actually pretty uh, pretty big. In terms of uh, Dirt Rally this is also a massive difference of 34 FPS going from 110 down to 76 for the laptop. When it comes to, uh, I think it's Doom, uh, you're looking at a 19 FPS difference, again from 106 to 87. GTA 5 has the closest margin here, just 6 FPS difference from 121 to 115, which is awesome, does mean that it's very playable, but obviously it's still a little bit of a difference, and in Unigen Heaven, you're seeing an 18 FPS drop here from 105 down to 87 as well. So, a pretty big difference, sizable, and actually more than I expected to see, so this is certainly quite interesting and seems that a lot of games are still fairly reliant on a faster CPU. So what's the conclusion here? Well for me this is kind of obvious. If you travel a lot and if you're so especially if you're someone like a student who uh, is going to be going to lectures, taking notes, coming back and that sort of stuff and especially if you're someone who's in uh, catered halls and have to move back to your parents every couple of months then this is definitely going to be a better shout for you rather than taking a full gaming desktop. Of course this one is still a pretty good shout as well just due to its size and if you pick up uh, a 20 year one or 24 inch monitor or something like that then it's going to be quite a nice companion for you but nonetheless this one is definitely going to be better for people who travel for people who want to work and game on uh, you know the train or the plane or wherever else you are that isn't necessarily at home at a desk so uh, yeah that's the definitely the more portable choice. If you're someone who doesn't really care about traveling too much or you're someone who just wants the best value for money the best performance possible uh, the cheaper system or just the generally better system overall then uh, obviously the ITX or even a, a full-size desktop system is the one for you. Now of course depending on what sort of size system you go for will depend on how difficult it is to build in. This one was a little bit of a pain just due to the sheer size and how much hardware you're cramming in a box this small. Uh, but nonetheless it is still a very nice overall system, great performance, great value for money as well and of course if you want that upgrade ability as well, if, if you want to completely remove everything and start again or just change out the graphics card, add more RAM, add another hard drive, anything you want to do, it's a lot more easy to do that in here than it is with this one but of course you can't travel as easily with it. I'd be really interested to hear what you think in the comments down below, are you a laptop gamer, a desktop gamer, or just can't afford either or anything else in between, let me know in the comments down below, I'd be very very interested to have a bit of a conversation with you about that. It's always nice to chat with you guys, so if you do that, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I guess that's kind of it. It was very interesting to see the comparison between especially two relatively similarly specced and relatively, especially once you add the peripherals into this one, uh, the uh, sort of relatively similarly priced systems uh, in terms of the performance. And I was actually kind of surprised at the performance difference they had. So it was uh, kind of interesting for me. Was it interesting for you? Again, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you want to support me and especially keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and occasionally Saturday basis, then uh, feel free 
free to take a look at the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links. They genuinely do help me out. They are genuinely paying my rent and keeping me making this as a full-time job. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. There's also a merchandise link there if you want to check that out too. And of course, there's Facebook and Twitter if you want to keep updated with all the Tech Team GB videos you fancy. Uh, and also, I do quite a few polls on there to see what you want to, to review next. So uh, especially on Twitter, take a look at that one. And uh, yeah, I'll leave some other videos over here for you if you are interested. There's a subscribe button over this side and we'll see you all in the next video.